Hello and welcome to the next video of our channel Practical Hope. In this video, we are going to solve parabolic partial differential equations using finite difference and crank nicholson method. We are going to consider the case of heat equation. First, what are partial differential equations? A partial differential equation is an equation involving uh, partial derivatives with respect to two or more independent variables. This is the general form. Such a partial differential equation is said to be elliptic if b square minus 4ac is less than 0. Example Laplace equation uxx plus uyy is 0. Here a and c are 1 and b is 0. Next parabolic if b square minus 4ac equal to 0. Example heat equation ut is equal to capital D uxx. Capital D is a constant depending upon the material. So, in this case since b and c are 0, so b square minus 4ac is equal to 0. And finally, hyperbolic b square minus 4ac greater than 0, example one dimensional wave equation. Next, uh, we are going to solve uh, these uh, partial differential equations using finite difference approximations. First consider two variables x and t. We have divided the range of x and t into a number of grids as shown. hx is the step size along x axis and ht is the step size along time axis. Say this is the point coordinates xt. So this xt can be written like this ihx jht. i and j are integers. So, if we change the value of i and j, we can specify all the points on the grid. Now, ux, first partial derivative of u with respect to x can be written like this. This is forward difference. It can also be written like this. This is called uh, backward difference. Or it can be written like this called central difference approximation. We can use any of these three expressions. Uxt can be written like this i is the position index and j is the time index hence ux can be written like this in forward difference approximation like this in backward difference and this using central difference approximation formula we can also write a second uh, partial derivative of u with respect to x like this expression using central difference approximation. Similarly, we can write expressions for ut and utt. Next, uh, let's take an example of a heat equation. This is the heat equation del u by del t equal to capital D del 2 u by del x2. These are the initial and boundary conditions. We know the value of u at t equal to 0 at all the values of x. And also we know the value of u at uh, initial and final value of x that is 0 and 1 for all the time. D depends on thermal conductivity, density and specific heat of the material. Let uh, N represents the number of grids along X axis and NT represents the number of grids along T axis. Let uh, step size along X axis HX equal to 0 0.1. Step size along time axis HT equal to 0 0.001 and for simplicity say D equal to 1. First consider these two points. Now we know the value of u at these two points because uh, u0t zero is 0 and u1t is 0. So u11 one one is 0 and u n plus 1 comma 1 equal to 0. Now if we consider these points on the left and uh, these points on the right side, we know the value of u at all these points that is 0. Hence in general we can write u1 comma j equal to 0 and u n plus 1 comma j equal to 0 ut as discussed earlier can be written like this and uh, uxx can either be written like this that is uh, at uh, time index j or you can say time t uxx can also be written like this at time t plus 1 or uh, time index j plus 1 we can use both these expressions for uh, uxx let's discuss them in detail say this is ut and say we are considering this expression for uxx. 
putting the expression for uxx and ut in heat equation we get an expression like this let r equal to ht by hx square then we can write the above equation like this now from this equation we can calculate the value of uij plus 1 from uij ui plus 1j and ui minus 1j this is the explicit method now we can also consider the second case say ut be expressed by this equation and this time we are taking uxx like this that is for time index j plus 1 putting the expression for uxx and ut in heat equation we get this let r is ht by hx square then above equation can be written like this now in this case uij plus 1 can be calculated from uij ui plus 1 j plus 1 and ui minus 1 j plus 1 this is the simple implicit method now there can be third way also say ut is given by this expression we can take the average of uh, uxx at j and at j plus 1 so this is the value of uxx at uh, j plus 1 and this is the value of uxx at j this method is called crank nicholson method putting the expression for uxx and ut in heat equation we get an expression like this which on rearranging the terms can be written like this now from this equation we can see the value of ui j plus 1 can be calculated from ui minus 1 j plus 1 ui plus 1 j plus 1 ui minus 1 j ui j and ui plus 1 j these five values of u denoted by blue circles crank nicholson method provides high accuracy in both space and time we are going to solve the heat equation using this expression. So this was the expression. For i equal to 2, the above equation can be written like this. For i equal to 3, we can write this. And similarly, for i equal to n, we can write equation like this. Now these two values of u are 0 because the value of u at uh, x equal to 0 is uh, 0 for any time. These two values of u are also 0. That is for final value of x. Now these set of equations can be written in matrix form like this. Say this matrix is A, this ut plus 1, that is the value of u at updated time this matrix by b and say this vector is denoted by ut that is the values of u at previous time t so we can write like this a ut plus 1 equal to b ut now this equation can be easily solved to get the value of u at the updated time next let's move on to the programming First, give a suitable title, solve partial differential equation, PDE using finite difference and Crank-Nicholson method, CLC, clear and CLF, XI, initial value of X, XF, final value of X, HX, step size along the X axis. Then we have defined the range of X from XI to XF with step size HX. N, number of grids along the X axis xf minus xi divided by hx similarly we define along time axis also ti initial value of time ht step size along the time axis nt number of uh, time steps that we are going to consider this is the final value of t ti plus uh, ht multiplied by nt and this is the range of t from ti to tf with step size ht then as discussed earlier r is ht by hx square these are the values of u at uh, initial and uh, final value of x at initial time that is t is equals to 0 these values are 0 as given in the problem define a for loop that will run from 2 to n because we have already defined first and last value here ui comma 1 equal to sin pi x 
we define a and b with size n minus 1 and minus 1 and having all the values 0. Then we define a for loop that will run from 1 to n minus 2. We assign values to a matrix then to b matrix. Now we get a and b matrix like this. Here the final value is missing. So we can define the final value of uh, matrix A and matrix B using these two expressions. Then we display matrix A, then display matrix B. We define another for loop that will run from 1 to nt. u1 j plus 1 is equal to u1j u2 colon n comma j plus 1 given by inverse of a multiplied by b multiplied by u2 colon n comma j. Finally, un plus 1 j plus 1 is given by this expression un plus 1 comma j. Then end we can display u. We can plot different values of u with x for different time x label and y label font size 6. Finally, we define legend like this. Minimize. Execute. First, we need to save it. These are the different values of u for different x at different time. We can also plot uh, 3D. So, subplot, subplot, plot uh, 3D, label, execute, This shows the variation of u at different x and at different time. If you like this video, share it with your friends and colleagues and don't forget to subscribe our channel if you haven't done it yet.